In this video, we'll focus on the very basics of music video editing, pacing, and beat matching. And we'll use Sindopa to save us some time. So let's go and see what we're gonna do. <laughs> Alright, so I have um, Premiere Pro open, Sindopa extension loaded. If you want to load it, you can use window extension Sindopa. Alright, so let's start. I have a, just a um, music track and nothing else, just my logo. I want to show you how to make the video we've just seen. So first step, we need to click the music track. And then as you can see, the start button is now green. Let's do the start and it is analyzed. Usually it's gonna take up to 60 seconds to, to get to this stage where the analysis is over. All right, the first thing we see is the first bar of the music track. So this red marker here signifies the first downbeat of the bar and the bar is four beats. By the way, you can always go to the help page and get a grasp of, of music theory and what is a beat, what is a bar, and all of those definitions. So let's get back to the home page of this extension and see what we're gonna do. All right, so pacing. We have, as you've seen in the first video, in the introduction, there is the introduction phase of this music track and there is the next phase after that introduction track. So let's hear it. All right, here we started with the next phase. So let's focus on the first introduction phase. The introduction phase has a part, it has to play a part. Clutching the listener's attention so that later as the music progresses, we can guide the listener to the length of the music track, just like an adventure. First we need to grab a hold of the listener and then we can guide them. Just imagine, if you're riding a bicycle and you want to hop on a moving truck, you first have to match the uh, speed of the truck and then you have to hop on the truck and then the truck can accelerate and then you will accelerate with the truck. So it's the same thing here. We, we, we begin with a slow, calm rhythm, the introduction rhythm. We grasp the listener's attention and then we accelerate as we are synced together we can accelerate together so also in in the introduction part we want to introduce the the video elements that will be present in the for the most part of of the other parts of the mu of the video let's start with introducing the dj or the dj set i love it when we see that the fact that the dj is tuning up the volume is just synced on the right time with the fact that the music is being tuned up. So let's hear it. On that first beat, I want to show the video where the um, DJ tunes up the volume. So I'll take the um, correct video. This is the maximum volume. And then we take it just to the first beat and then we can extend it back. So now we know that maximum level is rendered just when the first downbeat hits. So let's hear it. All right, now I don't wanna keep playing this video. I want to move to the next element, 
which is introducing the DJ. I don't like it that you don't see uh, the DJ's eyes, so I want to just move it to the place where the, he lifts his eyes up. As you see, the in and out points automatically generated by this Ndoba plugin, they help me understand that what's coming next is the next bar, right? The next group of four beats. So I want to change something because when a bar switches, also the music switches to the next bar. So what I want to do is, first I want to move to the next bar here. So I, I'm clicking this next bar button and I can see the markers for the beats ge automatically generated. And then I want to move to a different element in the video. I want to show the uh, silhouette of the dancer because it's still, it's, we are into the introduction part. We want to um, start slowly. Do you see this? There is a specific distinct sound over here and I want to do the change just on this specific sound. But I don't know when exactly this sound occurs, right? Because, all right, maybe it's here, maybe it's here. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't want to take risks, right? Because if I miss frame, the viewer of the video will also detect miss beat. So instead of beats, I want to set markers for the kicks and the toms. And now I have this exact location. I know that the next thing I'm going to do is going to be in that specific place. The next thing I want to show is the DJ knob spinning. But as you can see, I don't like that because I want the sound to be matched with the spinning of the knob, right? So I can allow myself even to, for example, take the beats, switch on the beat. But I want the spin to happen of that specific sound. So I want to mark that specific sound. Uh, I want to synchronize this with this spin. At the end of the movement, I want it to be the peak. I want it to be with the distinct sound. So let's see that. All right. So now that's better. And also I, I want to do a vibration exactly when the DJ spins the knob. That will give the, the spinning of the knob like a thump effect, like something's happening. So what I do is I want to take this marker and I want to put it on the video track so that later I can edit the video track in After Effects and put exactly at that marker the uh, vibration effect. So I'm going here to output type its marker, but I want to do a selected clip. So I'm selecting this video clip. I'm doing set selection. And now I have the marker exactly on that video clip. Then I can, you know, right click this, go to replace with After Effects composition and make the vibration effect. So let's say I did that and I replaced it. Okay, now we can move to the next section. I want to show the dance floor right now. After, after this bar, I want to introduce the lady in color with uh, her face on the front of the camera. Again, I am always moving to the next bar because I want to put things on, on the beat. Otherwise, it just doesn't look right. On the second beat, I went back to the DJ controller to see what, what the DJ is doing. Finished this bar, let's go to the next bar. And now we're getting into the build-up stage where the music goes like this. In the build-up stage, we want to put something every beat because we're getting the, to the next energy level. So we are going to accelerate now. All right, for, so for the first bar, I want to switch between this dancer in silhouette and the DJ. So I'm taking the DJ. So as the DJ is doing his thing, press C on the keyboard, cut it on the beat and remove these two and just leave it like that. And I want to put the dancers and cut it. So let's cut, cut, cut and cut and remove this one, remove this one, this one. All right, we can, we can switch again you know, with the DJ and with the silhouette dancer. 
But what I want to take the silver dancer a little bit further here, and then I'm going to cut her here again on the beat. And then I'm just going to leave the silver dancer one after the other, but I want to cut her movement in the middle so that it looks like it's not a fluent motion and then it would be coherent with the sound. So I can lock this and then I can do ripple delete. And then I want to show again the dance floor. Now, just before this part where, where we uh, begin the last drums before the next phase, let's see where the next phase begins. All right, so up till here, there's something that's going on here that is faster. In the original video, I didn't do anything with it. It's your choice. You can do whatever you want. So let's say we want to do something every time that that snare hits, right? That's too fast. And you might be wrong following the waveform because the waveform shows the sum of all frequencies. We want to see just the kicks or just the toms or just the snares. So let's see what we have here. Let's move it to snares. I suspect that this is the right sound that we want to follow. But if you want to be sure, you can just move to output type visualizations. And then we, we can see this pink dot blinking to the sound. You can feel that this is the sound. So let's do things just on these locations. We can move back to markers. All right, let's go to the next section. The drums just before the when the action begins. All right, so here we've got the listener in their peak moment, waiting for something to happen. We want to take advantage of that and to put something every drum hit. That's that's the goal. So first we move to that section. We have a marker on every drum hit. So let's change it to markers. I want to switch between the colored face facing the camera and the colored face with the side to the camera. I have these two footage types over here. This one and this one. This one is like on the side, as you can see, if I can play it, it's mostly to the side of the camera. This one is on the front. Let's switch between them. So let's just take the front, cut it. And also I want to take the side facing footage. Now let's switch between them. So delete, 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 delete. And here we can put the lights. And then we have this, that sound that is very quick. Very quick, it's like ta -ta 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 -ta. Also, again, we can do things with it. I think what I did here, I, I like took some kind of dancer. For example, let's take the white shirt dancer. And again, just cut, cut. Just we want it to be like a jerky move. You know what, I would change to a different dancer here. So let's just take the, the modern dancer. This is going to be a feature, yeah, in the next um, versions of this extension to do this cut, skip effect automatically. And you, you get the hang of it. 